Um, again, my name is Melinda Jean Stafford. I'm the program coordinator for the uh, student union at Boise State University. And one of the programs that I oversee is their rooftop bee farm internship program. Uh, it's a really great program for students to get involved in if they're interested in learning about beekeeping. They get hands-on experience working with actual hives on the rooftop of our student union. Uh, we have a really nice setup there. It's a flat roof uh, with access for the interns to get up there and work with the hives. Uh, we've really enjoyed that. And I got into beekeeping through my position at Boise State. So I came into that job with zero beekeeping experience. And that was just a couple of years ago. Uh, they hired me for a lot of running a lot of different programs. The beekeeping was just one of them. And they said, would you be interested in, in supervising this? And I said, why not? And I'll tell you that nothing teaches you how to keep bees better than getting some hives, getting some interns, and having some tools. So diving right in is really the best place to start. So I hope that through the presentation today, you all leave feeling a little more comfortable knowing what you need to get started, uh, knowing what to do and where to access different supplies. All right, so these are gonna be the main topics that we're gonna be talking about today. Um, and I've talked with a few of you as you were coming in, and it sounds like most of you here do not currently have bees, but a couple of you do, is that correct? Does it, who has bees currently? Okay, so there's a handful of you, awesome. Um, but for the rest of you newbies, uh, we're gonna go over these three basic topics today. But before we get going, I was once told by my mentor, beekeeping sensei, that there is one rule in beekeeping that we all must follow. Does anyone know what that is? There is one rule that beekeepers must know before doing anything. The rule is that there are no rules. So maybe everything I'm gonna say up here is a total lie. It won't be. But it's very important to remember that there are no rules in beekeeping. And the reason behind that is there are 10,000 ways to, to, to do 10,000 different things. So it's really important uh, throughout this presentation and throughout your research and throughout your time as a beekeeper that you understand that there's a lot of varieties to everything, equipment, strategies, technique. Uh, so you gotta try it out for yourself. But on the contrary, there are three things that bees need to live and thrive. And so those are our goals as beekeepers to provide those. Number one is a dry place to live. They need a dry place to live, the key word being dry. Number two, they need food. So they need to be able to get nectar or pollen from the plants around them. Or during times where there's not much, you can provide uh, pollen substitutes and nectar substitutes like sugar water. And the final thing that bees need is parasite management. There are parasites, including the varroa mite, that are taking down bees left and right. And they're not something that the bees can fight on their own. So they need our help to do that. So. There are no rules in beekeeping, but if you as a brand new beekeeper, never having worked with bees before, try to accomplish those three goals, dry place to live, food, and parasite management, you will do just fine. So everything you should do should try to aim at those three things. So today, what we're gonna be talking about, first and foremost, is the hive and the honeybee, some basic biology. So learning how to recognize the different types of bees in your hive, what their roles are, uh, what their eggs look like, what the brood looks like. And for those of you that haven't heard the term brood before, it refers to the capped over eggs that um, are developing bees or larvae. And then we will be talking about equipment. So all of you here today are probably wondering, well, what do I need to get started? So we're gonna talk about the very fundamental basic equipment that you might need to get started. There's a ton of products out there, but we're gonna talk about the very basics that you'll need to get going and how to use those tools. And then finally, we're gonna be talking about a year at a glance. So all of you here today are in the perfect position. It's midwinter and you're thinking about beekeeping, which might seem kind of odd to be thinking about getting ready for beekeeping now, but it's the perfect time uh, because in order to get bees in the spring, you gotta sign up and get on lists right now. So we'll be talking about what does spring look like, summer, fall, winter, and then back into spring. So beekeeping is inherently a local activity like gardening. So it's very important for you as a beekeeper to learn what works here in the Treasure Valley. So in your research that you might be doing, you might read an article about how to get your bees through the winter. And then you realize that the author of the article is from Southern Alabama. 
and well, their winners look a lot different than ours do. So you got to make sure to take things into context and know what works here. There is a really great way to do that. It's connecting with each other. I encourage all of you to network with one another and share ideas and share what works and what doesn't. Um, and another really great way to, to get in touch with local beekeepers is through the Treasure Valley Beekeepers Club. They have a really great website that I encourage all of you to write down if you brought pens. Get your pens. It's idabees.org, I-D-A-B-E-E-S dot org. It's a really great website that has a lot of references that are really useful. Um, and one of the features that I like most on their website is the what should we be doing now section. On the home page, there is a section labeled what should we be doing now? And it lists the top 5, 10, 15, 20 things that you should be thinking about right now. So if you go onto that website, it'll tell you the things to be thinking about in the month of January. And then in February, it'll update and it'll give you new steps to do there. And that's a really great way, especially as a first year beekeeper, to get a good idea of, of what's up next. So I definitely encourage you to check that out. Uh, the Treasure Valley Beekeepers Club meets on the third Tuesday of every month at 6.30 p.m. in the Idaho Outdoor Association Hall, which is up off of Vista near the airport. It's a great network of people. Those are the people that help me get going and get off the ground and help the hives at Boise State uh, really start thriving. So I encourage all of you to use that as a resource. Uh, another great resource is the art of beekeeping. Um, using Facebook pages definitely allows you to connect with other beekeepers, share photos, share successes, share failures, and share ideas with one another. So I definitely encourage all of you to use your social media outlets to connect with one another. All right, so now we're gonna get into the basic biology, that first section that I was referring to. The first thing that you might need to know if you're gonna work with bees is how to identify the different bees in your hive. Now this is a slide that I didn't, uh, that I added after the pamphlets you have were printed so you'll, you won't find it in there. Um, but at the very top you'll see the worker bee. Those are the female bees. They do basically everything for the hive as far as work goes. They harvest for pollen and nectar. They forage out in the fields. They take care of the young bees. They serve as nurses. They build out wax. They keep the hive cool. They keep the hive warm all of it. They really take care of everything. And those are the bees that have the stinger. So when you get stung by a bee, it's one of those ladies up there. In the middle is the queen bee. You can see that she's slightly larger uh, than the worker bee. And she has a, a larger abdomen here, this back part, and her thorax, the middle part, is shiny. And when you're looking for her in the hive, you can usually find her because she's a little bit larger and she has a, a shiny thorax. And she has a very important role. She lays the eggs in the hive. Uh, so she is truly the queen bee. And then finally, we have the drones. These, a lot like uh, the human species of males, they don't really do a whole lot. <laughs> they hang out, they eat a lot. They don't have stingers, so they can't really protect the hive. And they don't forage for pollen or nectar. Um, but they have one very important role, and that is to mate with the queen. So I guess we can give them that. But those are the three bees that you will find in your hive. And you'll notice that they all look slightly different. And the more you work with the hive, the easier it is for you to recognize the different type of bees. This is a little chart that shows you uh, the, the cycle of an egg from the point of being laid to the point of coming out um, of the of the comb as an adult for the worker bee. So it starts as an egg, turns into a larvae, and then a pupa, and then comes out as an adult. And the cycle looks very similar for the workers, drones, and queens, uh, but the days that it takes are slightly different. So the eggs, the queen lays all the eggs. And if you can look at this lighting just right, you'll see a little white dot or kind of a grain of rice in each little cell. And what makes it really easy to see is the, the black foundation. And I know DNB sells frames that does have that black foundation. It makes it really easy to see those eggs. Uh, and this tells you a very important thing. This tells you that your queen has been in your hive at least within the last three days, because based on the previous slide, you can tell that it takes three days for that egg to hatch. So if you still see an egg in the egg form, then you know the queen has been there in the last three days. Uh, and that can be really important because if you see that, you know that you don't need to keep 
rummaging through your hive to find your queen. You can leave the frames alone if that's what you're looking for and avoid the chance of, of harming your queen. So it's very good to see a sign like this, a very nice uh, pattern of eggs. And this is what the frames that you will pull out will look like when uh, they start to turn to larvae. You'll see on the far right, they're eggs and then they slowly get a little bit bigger and they turn to larvae, little crescent shapes. The, the growth stages for the three different types of bees are slightly different. So worker bees are capped in nine days, drones take the longest at 10 days, and then queens actually are the shortest at seven and a half days.